Good morning, United Believers. Good morning. And viewers. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The word tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Yeah. Believe not to our own, own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge Him. Trust Him when you feel bad. Yeah, trust yeah. Him when you feel good. Yes, yeah, sir. Trust Him when bills are due. Trust Him when you feel affliction in your body.
who had given me my counsel. My friends will also instruct me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Dear Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and the glory rejoice. My flesh also shall not rest in hope, but shall rest in hope. But thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thy, thy holy one seek corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of the light of my life. In thy presence, the fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. May God have the blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us come to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, Father, our eternal God, we come to you as we are. Sinners born and shaped in the iniquity of sin. Saved by grace and mercy in their love. Become no longer orphans, but now we have been adopted into your family as part of the royal priesthood and may join that with your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And are now left here in this realm to be ambassadors of the body of Christ. There's no greater honor, there's no greater privilege. There's no greater pleasure than serving you, the true and living God. And as we continue to go through this spiritual warfare, we ask that you help us humble ourselves before you, placing ourselves under your authority through the leadership of this church, that we can serve you, the true and living God. Through study and prayer, we can build a relationship and the foundation that will bring us to serving you and knowing that we are creation and not create God. That you forgive us for our sins, for the sins we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, and willfully and unwillfully. We ask that you bless the sick, the shut in, the widows, the orphans, the bereaved, and the falsely accused. And as we come to ourselves to realize that we have not enough adjectives or superlatives in our vocabulary, or all humanity vocabulary, to properly thank you. So we go to your perfect word.
need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. It is indeed a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, if I have a little extra pep in my step, a little bit more shelter in my love this morning, it's because I just celebrated 27 years of my
remind you that that lead voice that you heard is the newest member. Raquel told me to tell y'all of the Alpha, Calpha, Alpha. of the gospel 
is not found in the messenger, but in the message. I think sometimes we make too much of personalities in the kingdom of God. I think that's one of the reasons why people always walk around talking about how hurt they've been at church as though they've never been hurt anywhere else. Come on, come on. Can I say that one more time? And y'all have to at me. I, I think that one of the reasons why people walk around talking about how hurt they've been at church is because they place too much emphasis on people as though they've never been hurt anywhere else. Paul, every minister of the gospel, and every person who seeks to serve, and if really every believer, I think I'll carve out some time each year just to read Paul's letters to his sons in the gospel, particularly to Timothy, Titus. Paul is instructing this young man in the faith and who he is shaped and discipled and supported and pushed out into work and ministry. And as Paul writes to him, he becomes reflective. And that's what I really want to talk about today is reflecting on God's grace. I don't know about you, but there's certain seasons in my life, Sister Carolyn, where I'm just drawn into reflection. My birthday, uh, my wedding anniversary, the birth of my children, holiday seasons. Uh, I, I, I'm just drawn into reflection, thinking about God's grace. Three things I want to say today regarding that. Um, when we reflect on the message of the gospel, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but it's been the message of the gospel. That's been holding me up all these years. It's been the message of the gospel, yes. right? It's, it's, it's been the fact that God loves me. Yes, Lord. In spite of who I am. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. It's been the fact that God loves me in spite of what he knows about me. Mm -hmm. Come on. There, there are some things that, that you might suspect about somebody else. God actually knows. Mm -hmm. God, God actually ran the background check and still brought us on board. Uh, God, God actually saw us do some things and still loves us. Paul, what I love about Paul is that though others have tried to immortalize him and though others have tried to romanticize who he is, Paul is always honest. And here's what I found about the gospel. If you really understand the message of the gospel, it forces you to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you walking with me? Uh -huh. so, so as Paul reflects on God's grace, the first thing he does is that he thanks God for his providence. Uh -huh. Look at verse 12. Paul says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me in service. This word, uh, strengthen, means to enable, to render capable, or able for some task. In other words, Paul is saying to Timothy, you're going to get out there and you're going to be doing God's work, and, and you're going to uh, maybe possibly start trying to compare yourself to me. He said, now what I want you to draw when you look at my life is that everything that you think you can't do because you're not me, he said, I want you to remember that God enabled me to do everything you see me doing. Y'all missed out. Come on. Uh, don't, don't, don't you think for one moment that God's power is limited from one person to the next. Amen. And you know what I like about this? What blows me away, I was meditating on what is it that qualifies us for grace. Mm -hmm. Being broken mm -hmm. qualifies us for grace. Oh, uh, being uh, filthy rags oh, yeah. qualifies us for grace. Being rebellious, <laughs> uh, being sinners, uh, being low down, that's what qualifies us for grace. Being rebels mm. is what qualifies us for grace. I know that some of you all uh, start looking at your resume when I start talking about qualifications. And you say, oh yeah, at some 
when he's going to talk about how good we are. That, that's not part of the qualification of grace. But Paul said that, that, that I thank Christ Jesus who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service. First Corinthians 15, 10. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me did not prove in vain, but I labor even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God within me. See, when you understand grace, it creates an urgency in your life. When, when you understand that God didn't have to do it, but he did, it makes you sing for joy. It makes you serve with vigor and with passion. Uh, it, it excites you to wake up in the morning. I don't know about you, but for 27 years of my life, I wake up every morning and look at this woman that God blessed me to be with, and I still can't believe that God did that for me. Right before that is my salvation. When I think about how good the Lord has been to me, and how God saved me in spite of myself, See, see, 
It's a demonstration to other people that God can do it for them too. Yeah. D.A. Carson said this, it is the truth of the gospel that must change people's lives. Not the glamour of our oratory or the emotional power of our stories. Mm -hmm. Th that really gripped me. Recently, I was listening to uh, Tim Keller uh, give a talk. Actually, it was a small group session. And his brother asked him the question. He said, me and my wife got married in the uh, Unitarian Church. He said, and I want to know what is the significance or the difference of Christian vows than any other vows? <laughs> Tim Keller said, in order for me to tell you that, I have to first tell you the gospel. Mm -hmm. You missed that. Uh -huh. He said, see, in every other marriage or faith, it's a contract. He said, but in the Christian vows, it's a contract and a covenant. Mm -hmm. He said, see, in a contract, I'm going to fulfill my end as long as you fulfill your end. Mm -hmm. He said, see, in a contract, it's really about what I get out of it. Long what the contract says, then I stay in the contract. He said, but see, the moment that I don't get what I'm supposed to get out of the contract, then I'm able, rightfully, to get out of the contract. In other words, as long as you do what you said you was going to do, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. And I'll stay in the contract. He said, but in the Christian vows. It's contract and covenant. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that I'm praying that you do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But even when you don't do what you're supposed to do, I'm covenanted to stay with you in spite of the contract.
came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am. He doesn't say I was. Paul says, my status as being unworthy of God's grace never changes. So, so it ain't like I did something different. He said, I'm still who I was. A healthy sense of who we really are helps us to walk in the grace of God. I'm telling you, you stop talking about other people if you look in the mirror and deal with who you're looking at. Jesus. 
my hands are empty before God. All I have in my hands is praise. Yes, Lord. A man visited his godchildren one day. He was talking to the little girls that were playing with dogs like little girls do. And he'd never been a godfather before, so he was trying to connect with the children. So he said to one of the little girls, he said, show me your favorite dog. And she said, if I show you my favorite dog, you promise you're not going to laugh? And she went and pulled this dog out that was stitched up. She looked like she had a bad installation wig. <laughs> the thread was still showing. Had chip nails. She just looked bad. And he tried his best not to show any expression. And he asked her, he said, why is she your favorite? She said, because she needs me the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, when you realize that you're God's favorite because you need him the most. <laughs> but when you realize that you are God's favorite because you need him the most, uh -uh, let me say uh, let me say it to these people over here. But when you realize that you are God's favorite because you need him the most, uh, see, I don't know about you, but I don't come to church because I'm the preacher. I come to church because I need him the most. Most all honor 
and glory be ascribed eternally. That's why when we come to church, we give him the praise. That's why when we come to church, we lift our hands. Let me tell you something. That's why when we hear praise songs and we hear great music, uh, somebody might get confused and think that we are praising the people. We recognize that they're simply instruments and they're elevating and bringing more clarity to who our God is. St. Clair Ferguson said, every day we need our gaze redirected from ourselves to God. Humility is not simply feeling small and useless, like an inferiority complex. It is sensing how great and glorious God is and seeing myself in that light. That, that's why I said this season of reflection. When I think about the goodness of Jesus yes, and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Why is your soul crying out? Well, when I think about who he is and who I am,
We can't help but say thank you. It's in his name. For his sake we pray. And every heart say it. Amen.